tomorrow I'm gonna I'm gonna sell everything I own. I'm gonna flip the switch. Something different. I've literally lived on this road all my life. 29 years in this house. The rest of the time was spent uh, in my parents who, you know, I live next door to. In September of 2021, I flew to Texas, bought an empty cargo truck, then drove it 1,100 miles back to Wisconsin, where I spent the following year building it out into a tiny living space. Now, I'm planning to travel the U.S., Mexico, and possibly Canada. I'm Jack Smacky. Sit back and join me while I take you along on a van life adventure. So we spent five solid days with manpower provided by the auctioneer company, uh, boxing up everything that's you know in the house, the garage, the basement, um, and all around the property. Uh, there's a lot, you know. Yep, it's it's going to be pretty echoey in here. Uh, I'm sitting in my living room. Which is is virtually empty. Um, the only thing in this particular room is my chair and uh, my computer. Two screens, uh, very very uh, ghetto setup, if you will, uh, to my computer system, and that's it. That's all that's in this room. Uh, as of today is Wednesday, and as of last Saturday. Uh, I effectively sold everything I own. I've lived here 29 years. Some of the stuff that was here was actually here before I even bought the house. Hired an auctioneer. They came in, spent five days organizing everything, putting everything in boxes, loading them up on hay wagons, if you will, literally. Uh, and then we shook them all out, shook everything out on a Saturday, Saturday morning, and the auction started at about uh, 10 o'clock, 10.30 in the morning. Yeah, so tomorrow is the auction. Well, it's happening. Auction's, uh, auction's going on. We're probably about, uh, I don't know, two-thirds. Two-thirds the way done. Pretty much, uh, pretty much got everything. Everything all lined up, and uh, it's getting out of here, man. It's going to be pretty crazy. And lasted until early afternoon, 3, 4 p.m., when, uh, when everything wrapped up. Um, I guess uh, I'm, I'm expecting 100 to 200 people. Um, based on the auction that I had held for my parents' estate, um, that should sort of factor in there. Um, so yeah, 100, 200 people. So hopefully, you know, the auction will generate uh, a fair bit of income from all the things that I've acquired over the last 30 years. Uh, someone should find value in them. Over the last few days, I've had several uh, people come that had made purchases to pick up items that were, you know, a little bit bulky or otherwise difficult to extract uh, on the day of the sale. But as of today, uh, there is only one item left and that's organized to be picked up on Friday. So that'll be good. And otherwise, the, the property is, is pretty well cleared out and, and vacant. Uh, my next step here is to clean up, clean up the house a little bit and get it ready to list and sell. One of the things that I want to say is I'm not I'm not selling I'm not liquidating my assets because I have to 
I'm liquidating my assets because I, I want to. It's now is the time, now is the right time for me to do that. It is what it is. Here I am uh, in a position to finally go enough's enough. Let's vacate the premises. Let's get rid of everything. And because of the great, the, the big thing here is a lot of the stuff, I, I'm, I'm just in a mindset where, you know, I, I'm sort of done. I'm, I'm just done with the whole emotion of everything that I've, I've had here, you know. Um, so much background, personal stuff, which I'm sure I'll get into uh, eventually. Uh, but otherwise, everything's gone. Everything. Everything in this house that I intended, uh, the less the things that I intended to keep, there are some sentimental items that I chose to keep. Uh, but otherwise, everything else is is gone. It's 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 gone. Twenty nine years plus of things that I've had in my life uh, in this place are are now gone. Everything. So hiring the auction company, they come in and they work on commission, uh, as well as you know the help that I had is an hourly rate. So I paid, you know, had to pay. Uh, for everyone that was here, for the amount of time that they're here, a fair wage. Um, they assisted with all the setting up and uh, organizing of all the things. And then the auctioneer company gets a, uh, a commission on the sales and, and that's how they make money. So there is no way that I would be, have been able to, you know, organize all of this myself, move everything that, that, that I, I needed to move and try to market or, or sell it uh, individually. And, you know, in, in, in my lifetime, per se, or, you know, we spent, we spent five days getting things ready with, you know, half a dozen people uh, working every day to, to make that happen. So that, that, that in itself was very time consuming and needed, definitely needed. I live in a 2,500 square foot house. I've been living here alone, by myself, um, single male, you know, call it whatever you want. Um, done my best, tried to keep the place somewhat organized, but it, you know, I, I'm not gonna sugarcoat the shit. It, it, is, it is what it is. So that burden, you know, the burden of all of that has, you know, just weighed down on me on top of everything else that I've had to, to deal with and cope with. Divorce, dealing with you know child support, um, dealing with the death of my parents, and the subsequent issues uh, internally with my family members regarding all of all of that. I'll get into that uh, at a later date, um, and then just the overwhelming aspect of this house and, and trying to clean it up and get it organized so that I can do what I wanted to do. Um, and for those of you guys that are wondering, I, I'm not selling everything because I have to or that I'm in some sort of financial dire straits or anything like that. Um, I'm selling everything because I, I want to, that I need to for my own uh, personal mental health, if you will. Um, at some point after my divorce, I decided that once my kids were out of school and I wanted to wait until after they got out of school because I needed to make sure that I could support them and, you know, get through that step. Uh, court ordered child support was a huge concern of mine because I didn't want to be traveling the world or country and having to worry about uh, how I was paying for that child support or being, you know, somehow 
have an issue where I, I got behind and was in contempt and get thrown in jail, that would just not be good. And I, I didn't want to do that to my kids. So I, I said, I'm not going anywhere until my kids uh, get out of high school and the, uh, the, the court order for child support is you know, fulfilled. You know, kids become adults, they're out of school, they become emancipated, and then the child support uh, stops for me, and then that's the situation I'm in right now. So the plan was to wait and then to mass exodus, uh, sell everything I own, and go somewhere, do something that was undetermined, but at this point, we have a better plan. Um, originally, I had looked into buying, like, say, a, a, a boathouse, one of those floating, you know, houses that are next tied to a dock kind of thing. I thought that would be pretty cool. And then I thought, well, why buy that kind of a floating home when I could buy one that has motors and tool around lakes and things, and that would be cool too, you know, so I can move around. Uh, but the more I looked at that, I realized that. In order for me to do that, I would almost have to own property on a lake, uh, otherwise pay very, very exorbitant uh, marina fees to store or hold the boat. Um, and that just really wasn't economical, I thought, in the long run. And then ultimately, I was literally just limited to that one lake, wherever that lake, you know, I chose to go. So I said, why limit myself to a lake when there's a whole ocean out there where I could go pretty much anywhere in the world? You know, whether I do that or not, I have that option. So I started looking at sailboats. And sailboats were something that I think, you know, I could live aboard a sailboat. Never have sailed before, but mind you, you know, I could, I could live aboard a sailboat and make this work somehow. So don't know anything about sailing, don't, don't know anything about owning a sailboat. But so I, I delved into uh, a lot of sailing content on YouTube. And I've been watching quite a few channels, learning a lot about sailing, learning a lot about the, the, the living aboard, uh, the maintenance and, and all that court sort of thing. And that's sort of been my goal. Like once I leave here, once I sell everything I own, I'm gonna go find a sailboat. So here I am, I'm in that position, I'm in that situation. I've sold all my personal property. The only thing left I have to do now is to sell, sell my home. And then what? Well, I'm not going directly to a boat because I haven't found a boat. And I think finding a, the right boat is going to be challenging and difficult. So I don't want to be putting myself in a position where I don't have any place to live or go. So I decided that I was going to buy a house or some property uh, before, you know, I, I, I look for a boat and things. Uh, but as I looked and looked and looked and looked and looked for property and houses, I realized how difficult and challenging that aspect was going to be. Um, lots of good deals. Unfortunately, I would have had to fly uh, to the location, rent a car, and likely uh, get a hotel to stay overnight for a day or two to go look at a place, possibly put a bid on, and then ultimately likely get outbid or you know not not like what I see. So the idea of spending thousands of dollars to go look at a place that I wasn't going to buy or get outbid on didn't really sit well with me. I just didn't really want to waste that kind of money. So I changed my mindset. I decided, I decided that I needed a different way of traveling. And I thought, what about a van? Moving into a small van, I could live in the van, cook in the van, eat in the van, sleep in the van. But ultimately, how long was I gonna be in the van? I figured 
maybe a year. How long was it going to take for me to find either a boat or, or a, a, a land a piece of property that I could purchase? And I, I really didn't know where I wanted to go anyways. Um, so I started looking at vans that were already built and for sale and the, the basically what I what I discovered that it, it the vans really weren't big enough for me. I'm a tall guy and I really wanted to kind of be comfortable. So I wanted a taller vehicle. And so I started looking at these um, box trucks. Box trucks gives me you know a lot of bit of, a lot more headroom. So I was able to make a decision that that's the direction I wanted to go. I, I want to look at a box truck. So I looked at a few that were built out. Um, the ones that I saw were had high miles on the vehicle, and I thought at the end of the day, when I go to resell this vehicle, I wasn't really going to get much for it. So I didn't really want to spend a lot of money on it. And that really wasn't the direction that I wanted to go with it. So what I ended up doing was looking for a newer, empty box truck, something that I could I could fit out. You know, skills I already have for the most part. And I thought that was the good way to go. I could buy a newer, uh, low mile, empty box truck, fit it out spend the money on fitting it out and then when I go to sell it uh, be able to somewhat you know recoup my uh, my investment uh, and offset the resale value and a depreciation from the vehicle with with my work my sweat equity if you will and I thought that was a good idea so I I, I found a van on a Saturday called the dealership on a Monday Flew down to Houston, Texas on a Wednesday. The dealership, uh, the dealer picked me up from the airport. We took it for a test drive. I called my bank and made the wire transfer and then drove that van 1,100 miles back to Wisconsin. So here I am. I've got a built out van ready to accommodate me with pretty much everything. I think everything I'm gonna need. Uh, I'm sitting in an empty house just got to sell it and I'm off. I'm done. I'm, I'm out of here. 53 years living on the same road, 29 years in this house. I had grew up just, just across the street, just up the street here next door to my parents. And, um, so that's, that's pretty crazy, you know, having been here all my life, literally, um, I'm, I'm leaving, I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy, it's pretty, pretty overwhelming, um, but I think, I feel really good about it. The, the burden of everything that has happened over the last uh, half a dozen years or so um, has sort of finally come to fruition, you know, I mean, you know, getting divorced and working through that problem and then making a long-term plan uh, and then being in this position to move on, you know, I wasn't sure what I was going to do had my parents still been, you know, been alive at this point. Um, I, I guess I can't answer that question. It would have been a difficult decision to make had they still been uh, been living but um, unfortunately you, you know that's not the case so I don't have that burden or that 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 feeling of responsibility to be here for them for them um, on my shoulders you know that was would have been one of the reasons why I would have stayed uh, one of the reasons why I bought this place uh, was so that I could be there for them and um, they were there for me as well but um, ultimately I was here to make sure that you know they they had help if they needed and, and wanted so uh, but yeah so at any rate I'm I'm almost out of here I'm, I'm literally you know weeks uh, from from leaving a place I called home all my life uh, to adventure and 
move around to various places uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I don't know how it's going to go. I don't know how I'm going to uh, cope with that. Uh, we'll see. But uh, we're going to give it a whirl. So, yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in. Be sure to check out next week's video. And if you like the content, be sure to like and subscribe.